in the Nag Hammadi text, which is older than the Bible and the origin of many of the stories in the Bible itself, you can find a very interesting story on the origin of the world. Sophia sent her daughter Zoe, being called Eve, as an instructor in order that she might make Adam. When Eve saw her male counterpart cast down, she had pity upon him and said, Adam, become alive, arise upon the earth. And then what happened? Well, immediately her word became accomplished fact, for Adam, having arisen, suddenly opened his eyes. When he saw her, he said, You shall be called the mother of the living, for it is you who have given me life. And then the authorities were informed that their mottled form was alive and had arisen, and they were greatly troubled. They sent seven archangels to see what had happened. They came to Adam. When they saw Eve talking to him, they said to one another, What sort of thing is this luminous woman? For she resembles that likeness which appeared to us in the light. So what did they do to her? Now come, let us lay hold of her and cast our seed into her, so that when she becomes soiled, she may not be able to ascend into her light. Rather, those that she bears will be under our charge. But let us not tell Adam, for he is not one of us. Rather, let us bring a deep sleep over him and instruct him in his sleep to the effect that she came from his rib in order that his wife may obey and that he may be lord over her. So the gods, or these seven authorities, these landlords, are forcing a patriarchal setting. I call them landlords, but they are also the seven of them. In the older texts, these seven authorities tell Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge. In the newer version, the Bible, these seven landlords simply become the Lord in all capital letters, but they are by no means the great architect of the universe. They represent a governing body, and in this story they represent the governing body of the Garden of Eden. So this fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, did it contain poison? Is that what God was warning them about? Eat this and you will die resembles something that is poisonous, but the serpent assured Eve that she would not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. God punished them for knowing good from evil, but they did not die in the day that they ate this forbidden fruit. As a matter of fact, both of them lived to be hundreds of years old, so according to the Bible, what the serpent told Eve was the truth, and God was lying. Why does God lie to them? Having the knowledge of good and evil seems like a strange thing to condemn someone for. People are often incarcerated today because of crimes they committed resulting from their lack of knowledge of good and evil. Unless these gods wanted to tell us what was right and wrong rather than to have us know the difference. To the Gnostics, Jesus was the wise serpent who gave knowledge unto man. This Lucifer-like serpent was the good one who gave us the knowledge that separates us from other animals. Jesus and Lucifer are likened to the two serpents on the staff of the Caduceus. They are bound together so tightly they are inseparable. 
These two forces are the macrocosm and the microcosm forces in this mythology. One of them, Lucifer, has been cast down out of the heavens onto the earth, and the other, Jesus, is the risen savior. Making the forbidden fruit an apple is obviously symbolic. An apple was chosen because it is a perfect fit for the actual forbidden fruit. Apples are red and they are the fruiting body of a tree. The Amanita muscaria is also red and it too is the fruiting body of a tree. When you take a bite out of an apple, you see the same white inside that you would see if you find an Amanita muscaria mushroom in the wild with a bite taken out of it by a deer or another animal. It is a safe alchemical representation of the actual fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil without giving away any actual knowledge of the fruit itself. We know that apple trees are not found among trees of the forest. However, this verse is symbolically telling us where the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil may be found. Looking in a pine forest for apples would be a good start. Christians will agree that Christ is the anointed one as Christos means anointed one. But anointed with what? The chrism as in the anointing oil, or Crisco. Crisco is the Chris company or the oil company, and there are associations to fertility worship that will be left for another time. But when you think of Jesus Christ as the oil itself, or as the medicine or entheogens themselves, the miracles do make much more sense. Oil walking on water and Healing the sick with its touch is really only the beginning. But if Jesus was the great teacher, then why is it that we have no need for anyone to teach us when all we need is the anointing to teach us of all things? It seems as though this anointing is more important than the teacher. This holy oil was also used by monks who would shave rings around their heads and marinate a skull cap in entheogenically infused oil. And this cap was placed on the fresh razor burn on their heads and the ring of hair around their head would serve as a sponge preventing the oil from running down their eyes and into their face and down the back of their neck. And witches practice similar ceremonies. The woman would put green plant material all over her skin, consequently turning her skin green. And she would also put these oils in the most capillary rich areas that she could find on her body, which just so happened to be between her legs. And the green witch with the broom handle between her legs 